goes there? It is I, Arthur, son of Usa Pendragon from the castle of Camelot, king of the Britons, defeater of the Saxons, sovereign of all England. Ooh, Arthurian mythology? I love the Holy Grail. What are we getting now? Netflix's upcoming cursed series features radical changes to the Arthurian legend we knew. Oh, guess what? We already got one. No, 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 really. We already had some radical changes to the Arthurian legend a while back. Hello, everyone. I am Mecha Random 42, the one, the only, the original, your favorite YouTube Harpy. Now, I wasn't going to do a video on this just yet, but a lot of people are picking up on it. Sometimes you do a video too soon and nobody notices it and it just kind of gets buried. And then when everybody starts talking about something, I know. Shut up. I'm sorry, Admiral Hubris. I will not do that. I will be better. But no, we already have an Arthurian legend that has pretty much everything that they're talking about in this article. Well, l let me get into this article real quick. It's from Bounding Into Comics from a few days back. And here you go. Netflix's Curse will explore the legend of King Arthur and Excalibur in a whole new way. The series is based off a book authored by screenwriter Thomas Wheeler, known for such works as Empire and whatever, featuring comics by Frank Miller. Sure, all right. So I can see why I got picked up. It's going to have some geek cred. Everybody loves the King Arthur legends. Everybody is familiar with the story. It's an instant sell. It's also public domain. It's also something that has been retold time and time and time and time and time and time and time again. In fact, it's been done so many times, we already have the definitive story version of that, and that is Monty Python's The Holy Grail. <laughs> no, really, that's the best version. I mean, what are they gonna do that's so great to this? By the way, that we've already seen a million times before. Oh, we're getting there. You saw, you saw Saber on the thought. We'll talk about her in a second. While speaking to Barnes & Noble, the pair described their take on the legend as Miss of Avalon meets the Hunger Games. Oh. All right, the Hunger Games got popular right on the tail end of all the stuff like Twilight and all the all the stuff where you have these teen romancy things where they want to just, I don't know, focus on that more than they really want to focus on a lot of the storytelling because their target demographic is a lot of teenage girls, right? And that's the type of stories they want. They want the more romances and things. So that's why everything has been trying to reboot Twilight. Of course, they're, now they're going to focus on the Lady of the Lake of this one. As the pair were working on their idea for Curse, they felt that King Arthur had been played out in many ways. I agree. Like I said, many, many, many ways. The multiple adaptations, movies, television shows, and multiple other incarnations of the legend, they set their eyes on someone else, the Lady of the Lake. Wheeler explained that he wanted to frame the story for his own daughter, hoping that she might be similarly inspired by the mythology the way I was when I saw John Borman's Excalibur. Wheeler added, who's her King Arthur? What character could be her entry point into this world? Well, why not start with the Holy Grail and the best one, Graham Chapman? The legend of the Lady of the Lake offered some tantalizing possibilities. Who was she? What was she? How did she end up with this mysterious, seemingly tragic figure with this fateful connection to Excalibur? This ended up being the spark. All right, and here you go. Some young girl with Excalibur here. Wheeler makes it clear that this story is told through her eyes. I can't pronounce that. I've never been good at pronouncing things I read. He explains that telling the story through her eyes allows us to introduce all the characters in the mythos in a totally new, unexpected way. He adds, for fans of the Arthurian mythology, there are many surprises and mysteries to unravel, surrounding some very well-known characters and some fun reveals along the way. All right, and they get into her backstory. Normal teenager, whatever, blah, blah, blah. This is pretty much the same young teenage character that we see in pretty much everything. They want more than what they have. They're, you know, yeah, we get it. That's pretty much typical teenage girl storytelling. But here's the thing. What they're doing with this is yet another girl version of. Now, it's not nearly as bad to the extent of like Batwoman or Riri Williams, Mary Racy Palpatine, Mikey Burnham from Star Trek Discovery. It's not nearly as bad as that. But what it looks like they're doing is they're taking away the fact that Arthur was special. They're taking away the whole, oh, no, 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 no. Her, she can't, she, she was better. She was the first one. She had Excalibur first. She, her, her. 
Merlin. Is, and is it sad that this guy's like age appropriate for me to look at? And he's Merlin. I know. I know. It's so bad because like normally Merlin is, you know, one of these really old sort of fuddy duddies, you know, old, 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 old men, the 7,000 year old men sort of types. This guy's like my age. Yeah, I'm older than I look. If it wasn't clear already, this retelling of Arthurian legend is about Nemu and her journey, Wheeler states. These words set her on her incredible path towards a remarkable destiny. For this is the story of the woman who wielded Excalibur before King Arthur. The true queen, the one true queen, the one that's better than King Arthur. And then we're just going to erase him because he's just a man. Well, you know what did it in like a much more interesting and respectful way? Yeah, this is why you clicked on the video, probably. You know it. Anime did it. So, and not only did anime do it, they did it a long time ago. They've made video games. I mean, this is just more of the fighter type. The first one I heard about was a visual novel. Let's get into some of the plot now. If you don't want to be spoiled for the plot, turn the video off now. But they take the story of King Arthur, sort of, and bypass that. Take that as inspiration, as a starting point. And it doesn't feel like they're just using that as an excuse to take away King Arthur's you-know-what and to make it a girl, even though they absolutely do that. Oh yeah, they've already done this and we're not even upset by it. This is actually a very well-loved and respected franchise. Here we go. Boom. Fate Stay Night. And of course, you have the film Fate Stay Unlimited Blay Works. There was a visual novel. Fate Stay Night is a Japanese visual novel, which was originally released as an adult game for Windows. A version of Fate Stay Night rated, rated ages 15 and up, titled Fate Stay Night Rialta Nua, Irish for New Stars, which features Japanese voice actors. So you've got your backstory. And of course, we're going with the wiki here because, as you know, I'm not like the biggest... No, 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 I'm not. Don't, don't let the hair fool you. This is more punk and stuff from back in the day. I like the video games quite a bit for the more anime style video games for the most part. I like a lot of those. And a lot of times, if it was a visual novel, that was my early, 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 early days on Twitch and Hitbox back in the day when I didn't even have internet. I would read visual novels because... You just read them out loud and there's not a lot of gameplay. There's not really graphically heavy and intense. And that's how I found out about this. And we'll, we'll get into the plot here. So if you don't want any spoilers on that. The story revolves around Shiro Imiya, a hardworking and honest teenager who unwillingly enters a to the death tournament called the Fifth Holy Grail War, where combatants fight with magic and heroes throughout history for a chance to have their wishes granted. Of course, specifically, we're talking about Saber here. Artoria Pendragon. Mm, sound familiar? Sound familiar? Is a fictional character from the Japanese visual novel. Saber is a heroic warrior summoned by the teenager Shiru Imiya to participate in a war between masters and servants who are fighting to accomplish their dreams using the mythical Holy Grail. Saber's relationship with the other stories and characters depends on the player's decisions and she can become a love interest. Yeah, she's a typical waifu. But you know what else she is? A retelling and a redo of the Arthurian legend made and adapted for a country that probably can't relate super much to some British mythology and history. And they adapted that in a way that I believe was pretty respectful from my understanding. It's been a long time since I've remembered a lot about this other than a little bit of this game that I played a few years back. I don't remember people being actually upset by that, even though that was much more of a swap out than anything else. Because when you're just doing it for modern television, let's face it, it's a current trend of what can we do to reboot something that's going to be familiar to people so that we can get it pitched to the executives quickly, push this little, oh yes, 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 it's going to have diversity. Yes, it's going to have this. Yes, it's going to have that. Will this new Arthur show called, what is it called again? Cure Cursed. Will Cursed do that? I don't know. I don't know if it will. It might be the best thing we've seen. It might be just another generic run of the mill retelling of the King Arthur story or a slight expansion. Some of them are hit, some of them are missed. Which one is your favorite King Arthur retelling? Tell me in the comment section below. I am MechaRandom42. 
I don't think this one's going to be for me, but you know what? If you really want me to check it out, I'll check out one or two. I'll see you guys on the next video, live stream, or wherever. Bye. Thanks for watching. If you liked it, make sure to hit that like button. And if you want to see more, don't forget to subscribe. See you in the next video. Bye.